Jordan is super romantic. Lori Harvey took to her Instagram stories to share what the Black Panther alum did for their first Valentine's Day together, and it was super romantic. The 34-year-old actor rented out an aquarium for their date and decked it out with flowers. Lori shared a video of an underwater hallway filled with flower petals and candles and wrote, my baby rented out the aquarium so we could do a private tour and see the turtles and then we walked into this. Then they had dinner in the aquarium and the table was so dreamy, set with tons of flowers and candles. As well as a romantic private menu of edamame, shishito peppers, spicy tuna crispy rice, as well as tataki, sashimi, and salad. After their swoon-worthy date, the Creed star took Lori back to a hotel, which she showed off on her Instagram stories. It was adorned with tons of white roses and rose petals, as well as pink roses all across the room in vases, as well as across the floor and on a table. Their bed was also covered in tons of red rose petals. And the bathroom was filled with tons of red roses, as well as candles and votives and rose petals all across the floor. She finished off her posting spree by sharing what Michael got her as a gift, saying, the best gift ever. Baby bought me stocks in Hermes. So for those who don't know what's going on here, that's Michael B. Jordan. And that's what he did for his girlfriend, Lori Harvey, a couple of weeks back. Um, somebody just brought it back to my attention. And when I looked in the comments, I saw the same thing that I saw the first time that I saw it. Of course, a lot of people who were really impressed by all of the money, you know, is really lovey dovey and all of that other stuff. But a lot of women were saying things like, man, Lori Harvey, she's so lucky. How did she get so lucky? She just get whatever she was. You know, she's so lucky. And I'm gonna be real with y'all. And I'm not negating that she's lucky or special or whatever. But when I look at that, I don't see luck. I, I see creativity and effort on Michael B's part. But most importantly, I just think this is what it looks like when a man already wanted a relationship before he got into a relationship. Like this is what it looks like when a man was just waiting for his opportunity, waiting for his shot. And whenever he got it, he showed up, he showed out, you know, he goes over and beyond. This is not what it looks like whenever you have to beg a man and give ultimatums. Like, Lori Harvey didn't have to beg him to do all of this. Now, you might say, D, well, how do you know that you weren't there? Because whenever you have to beg a man who don't already want what you want, when you have to sit there and give him ultimatums or guilt trips and all of his lectures and all of that kind of stuff, what you get from a man is this bare minimum. You don't get his best efforts. You get his best excuses as to why he can't do it, as to why he got options, so you need to be doing this for him, as to why you need to consider polygamy, as to why you need to wait out your best years until this happens and that carrot just keep on moving and moving and moving. So no, I, I don't think that she asked him or had to beg him to do any of this stuff, and I don't think that it's luck. You know, I, I think it's just a matter of getting with a man who wants what you want before he ever gets with you, and you didn't have to sell him on that. Now you might be saying, well D, how do I know that a man wants the same thing that I want? I can't trust his words and that's the truth. Look at his preparation because as men, we prepare for everything that we want. When a man wants some money from you, don't he come prepared with a sob story? Uh, you know, I just, I normally don't do this. I normally don't ask for that. I would never ask for no money or nothing like that. He came prepared because he knew what he wanted. You know, I had a homeboy one day he, well, back in the day where he, he loved women. He loved to have a lot of chicks. That's just what he liked, right? That's what he wanted. He wanted a lot of girls. So guess what? He had preparation of multiple bonnets <laughs> in his closet, uh, spare toothbrushes, pink ones, the electric ones, condoms, plan B's. You know, I ain't judging them. But as men, we prepare for what we want. And the same thing goes for relationships. Like, I think the confusion comes from sometimes, you know, you might date a guy and you say, well, he still gave me the bare minimum. He wouldn't do none of this kind of stuff, money or no money. He wasn't showing up like this, giving me effort. I still had to do this, that and the other, try to teach him, guide him. And he was prepared for a relationship. He seemed to be prepared anyway. So you have to be kind of specific. Just because a man is prepared for a relationship don't mean he, he's prepared for the right relationship with you. Like, for instance, they always say that a marriage or even relationships, they're a marathon. They're not a sprint, right? So you might look at a guy and you say, okay, he's prepared. He's in shape. He's prepared to run a marathon. He's ready. He, you know, we got a win. He got, he, he got good shoes on. He's ready. But is he wanting to run the same marathon as you? Because you might be outside getting ready to run a 26 mile uh, through through cities and sightsee and go places and travel the distance. Meanwhile, yeah, he's in shape, but he's at an indoor track. He's getting ready to run around in circles over and over again like he's been doing for years, doing the exact same thing and ended up the exact same place that he was whenever he first met you. So y'all are still not the same. Like, yeah, he's prepared to run a race, but is he prepared to run your race? 
And it's not to say that, you know, all hope is lost. If he didn't start out that way, you know, can a man make an adjustment? Absolutely. Absolutely. But there needs to be a resetting of the foundation. There needs to be a reestablishment of the nine core emotional needs that can make or break any relationship. And I'm not going to go too far in depth with that because I talk about it in great detail in my book, Healed Together Without Hurting Each Other. And that's available at the link down in the caption or in the bio, wherever you see it. And it's probably best that you get it now before it goes back to full price. But the moral of the story is this, you know, when it comes to this, no, it's not luck. And it's not just that Michael B is just this awesome person. He's just such a, uh, such a good person. No, he just came prepared. So if you want this for yourself, it's just about saying, you know, is this man preparing for what I want? Does he want what I want? He's not bad if you don't want what you want, but he's clearly not the right fit. And when somebody's not the right fit, you only got two options. You only got two options. Either there needs to be some alterations made, something you can't force on him, or you need to put him back on the rack and let him be for somebody else, you know. Let them be for somebody else because I guarantee you everybody has somebody who's the perfect fit for them. Not perfect, but the perfect fit. And there is a man who wants what you want, who's been preparing for what you want. And whenever he gets his opportunity with you, he's going to blow your mind too. But that man can't blow your mind if you're too busy trying on man after man after man who ain't the right size. So those are just my thoughts. So y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Again, Heal Together Without Hurting Each Other. My new book is available now at the link down in the caption or in the bio. I'll let y'all let y'all be good. Peace.